Hey guys and welcome back to the card review series. So today we are looking at my favorite masked hero, elemental hero, and that is Contrast Hero Chaos. And as you guys saw by the thumbnail, and if you guys haven't seen already the Daily Duels one year celebration deck profile, I really like Contrast Hero Chaos because he looks like one of my favorite forms, one of my favorite common riders, common rider double fang joker form. Like, pretty much... If there's any uh, common Rider that you can point a finger at that uh, Contrast Hero looks like, it's definitely him. Like, it's pretty much him, except instead of his eye being blue, they're red, and then you switch the color. So, uh, instead of black being on the left side and white being on the right side, white's on the right side and black's on the left side. But pretty much, that's definitely where they based uh, this mass Hero off of. So, and also, he's just a really good card. So, he is a Warrior Fusion Effect, level 9. And level 9... Because it's level 9, that's very important. Keep that in mind, level 9. 3,000 attack, 2,600 defense. It is a fusion between two mass hero monsters. Its effect reads, this card is always treated as an elemental hero monster. Must be fusion summoned. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. While face up on the field, this card is also light, a tribute. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can target one face-up card on the field, negate that card's effect until the end of this turn. Alright, so, you're probably thinking, like, two mass hero fusion, like, how, what the, so I'm supposed to have two mass heroes on the field and poly into this guy? Well, you could, but, because of that little, uh, parentheses stipulation right there, he, you can also summon him another way. This card is always treated as an elemental hero monster, even while in the extra deck, so he's always treated as Elemental Hero, you know, Chaos, or, or, or contrast, Elemental Hero, Contrast Hero, Chaos, or whatever the hell you want to call his name is. But pretty much, you can Miracle Fusion into this card. And, you know, the way that the uh, Mass Hero deck pumps out Mass Heroes, you know, just like, oh, you know, I have uh, Acid on the field and I, uh, I go ahead and Mass Change into... Uh, Deanne, and then I attack, and then I summon Shadow Miss, and Shadow Miss, I mass change him into uh, a Dark Law. Oh, you killed my monsters, now I have a whole bunch of mass heroes in the graveyard. Okay, well, Miracle Fusion? And then, like, Miracle Fusion? What are you Miracle Fusion for? And then you just summon Contest Hero Chaos, a 3000 beater, it has a great ass effect, and you're just like, ah, oh, shit, because he is good. Now, I'm going to go into detail about why this whole level 9 thing is actually really important, because you're probably wondering, like, well, what does level, being level 9 have to do with anything, Daniel? The problem with him being level 9 is that you cannot form change into him. <laughs> because when you form change, it has to be the same level. All of the mass heroes are level 8, so when you mass change into them, it doesn't matter because they're all level 8, so they have to be the same level. Konami decided to be smart and decided to make this guy level level 9 instead of level 8, so you can't mass change him. Also, I'm not even sh sure if he's even considered a, you know, mass hero, because I think with form change, you mass change into a mass hero, so I don't even think that you could pull that off, but still, just because he's level 9, you don't even, you can't even have to, you don't even have to think about it. He's level 9, they have to be the same level to change, so you can't change into contrast hero chaos, which is fine. Like I said, the Miracle Fusion play is the best. Like, if, you, if the Miracle Fusion play was not even available, this guy would suck ass, because you couldn't even get him out of the field. Because you can Miracle Fusion two mass heroes into this guy, that's what makes this guy awesome. You know? So, when you're not Miracle Fusioning for, uh, mostly just absolute zero at this point, a lot of uh, mass hero decks are, are taking out, um, Alias, because it's just not worth it, you know? Like, Shining is great and all, but he's really just a beater, and then you get your cards back to your hand. Yay, you know. You know, and Koga, he's not really worth it either. I mean, although Koga is strong now, since they did reveal that attack gain that he gains is 500 for each one of your opponent's monster, and then he can, you know, minus your attack and damage set. That's, that's big. That's a lot of chunk of damage, but it's just really not worth it, you know, and you really don't got room in the deck. Uh, you might have room in the deck if Fire and Ice Hand get hit, you know, because in my version of the deck, I'm running three of each, Fire and Ice Hand, so I'm pretty much waiting for the ban list like the rest of y'all, to so we can go ahead and see if the hands get hit, and if the hands get hit down to, like, one or two, then we, you know, we can just the uh, deck accordingly, but, uh, as long as the hands are at three, the deck really doesn't have room for, you know, Alias, or really need it, in my opinion, but, uh, just being able to, um, uh, Miracle Fusion into this guy, as well as Absolute Zero, it's just a beast. He's a 3,000 beater, and his effect is just great. Not the whole, uh, well, this card stays up on the field. It's also treated as, uh, you know, light, 
because he's also dark. So, yeah, it's kind of like a light and darkness dragon. So, if you got like what goes and match on the field, he would kind of just go back and die automatically. I, uh, I think he maybe uh, he can respond to when he's summoned, but I don't think he can actually do that. Because I don't, I don't think that goes and match activates. I think it's just always. So, I think he would just die as soon as he gets on the field. But if I'm wrong, then maybe you can, like, when he's summoned, you can activate his effect and then target the goes and match and then negate it. But that would be a lot of trouble. You pretty much, every time, I'm not sure if goes and match activates, but if it does, then you can chain to it and negate the goes and match for the turn, but then every single turn you would have to negate, you know, which would pretty much be a waste. Then he would just be a 3,000 beater, and you really don't get to utilize his really great effect, which is the last part that once per turn, during either player's turn, you could target one face-up card on the field negate that target's effect until the end of this turn. Negate any card. Any face-up card. Well, as long as it's not spell speed 3 because this guy's only spell speed 2. So, you know, if you summon this and um, really can't think of a situation where he'd be stopped, you know, he's not inherent summon, so you can't blackhorn him. You can't warning him because you'd have to warning the miracle fusion that's summoning him. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's say you're trying to go for an attack and your opponent activates negate attack. Yeah, you can't negate that because that's spell speed 3. But anything that's spell speed 2 or lower, negate it. You know, if your opponent wants to uh, summon a tour guide, that's a really, really weird example, but summon a tour guide and use its effect, you can be like, no. If you if, uh, if you have a crazy box on the field along with this guy, you can use its effect, negate the crazy box effect, and then crazy box can attack, then you have two 3,000 beaters. Uh, also, the way that this card is worded and the way that's read, um, it can also negate, you know, things that uh, resolve on the field as well. So, for example, if you have this guy in the field and your opponent goes dark hole, you can go effect chain because you're supposed to be two, negate the dark hole, and it just fizzles. So, you know, just being a 3,000 beater that can just negate one. Uh, face up card on the field during either player's turn is definitely just an awesome ass effect and it's just so easy to bring out with just the miracle fusion so when you're done using up all the mass heroes you get to bring out this contrast hero chaos coming right a double fang joker and just whoop your opponent's ass with it so tell me what you guys think of this card i definitely like him he's really cool and uh he's my favorite mass hero or contrast hero he's probably my favorite elemental hero as well he's just that cool i think he's awesome i like his design and I just love how they really based him off of just Kamen Rider, <laughs> off of Kamen Rider Double. Like, literally, I should you not. Like, the little spike out, the, out of his shoulder, the spike out of his arm, and the spike out of his knee. Yeah, Kamen Rider Double did, and Feng Joker form does the same thing, except on the white side instead of the black side. Kamen Rider Double has the has scar, well, has a scarf, just like him. Like, they, they totally based Kamen Rider and Feng Joker. Uh, off, no, this guy was totally based off of Kamen Rider Feng Joker, and just... I just love this design. It's just awesome. So tell me what you guys think of Contrast Hero Chaos. We're not done with our uh, Mass Hero Marathon we actually, or Element Hero Marathon. We got one more hero to look at, which uh, is the OCG exclusive Shonen Jump or whatever. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. I forgot his name. But we'll take a look at that uh, next Tuesday. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Card Review. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all support. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks for watching.